In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a t-shirt quilt with batting in the middle, binding on the outsides, and everything. Hi, welcome to my channel. Wait. Hi, I'm Nikita, and welcome to my channel, where this is what I do. I drink, and I sew things. Today I'm drinking a wine I got for my birthday. Ooh, happy birthday to me. This is Cooper and Thief Cellar Masters, a 2018 Pinot Noir. Very excited about this because it was aged 75 days in brandy barrels. Ooh. Oh gosh. We all know what happened the last time I tried to do this on camera. <laughs> cork away because corks are for quitters. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's delicious. Previously on Drink and Sew Things. But I don't have that many t-shirts. Okay, fine. <laughs> So step one is to wash and dry all of your t-shirts. The next step is to figure out how many you have. So I decided that I wanted to do five by four t-shirt quilts. Each one of our squares is going to end up being 12 inches by 12 inches. So by doing five by four, I'm going to end up with a quilt that's five feet by four feet. After you figure out either how big you want it or how many t-shirts you have, the next step is to fill in the gaps. I have 37 t-shirts. Granted, like this one, it's it's double-sided, okay? Some of them are double-sided. I'm not that much of a hoarder. And I'm gonna make two five by four quilts, which means that I need to get three more. And this is the fun part. Take yourself down to your local Union Gospel Mission or whatever and get yourself some more t-shirts. You can find the best, most hilarious, most random t-shirts at a thrift store. Plus they're super cheap. So there you go. Now it's time to cut them. For most of these t-shirts, I only want the front. I don't want to have to cut through multiple layers of fabric. I want to just take the front off. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut along the seams. So now I have just the front of the t-shirt. You're going to repeat this for the other 39. We might as well just get to it. After you've got all the backs cut off your t-shirts, the next step is going to be to press the t-shirts. Before we cut them out, we don't want there to be any wrinkles in them so that we can make sure that they're the right size, we can get them all centered and all that stuff. Be warned, when you have these kinds of decals, you usually don't want to press this directly with your iron, which is why you need a press cloth. So place the pressing cloth or the kitchen towel over your design. Don't worry too much about the outsides or down below because we're gonna cut a lot of that away. Now that I have one t-shirt done, I'm gonna slide it to the side. I'm gonna take a drink of my wine. Then you're gonna do it to all of them. You are now going to need your template. This is why I love these quilting rulers because they're see-through. Okay, you're gonna wanna roughly center your design. Now here's the best part. You don't need to cut out exactly. In fact, we don't want to cut out exactly. We want to do a rough cut. We are going to put it onto the interfacing as a rough cut, then we're going to cut it out and then square it up after because then you don't have to fiddle with it. Just trust me, it's easier. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut there like an inch and a half below my quilting ruler. So now I have this, I don't know, probably 13-ish by 13 something, not quite square. I'm going to put it aside and I'm gonna cut out each of my other t-shirts. All right, let's 
pick up from where we left off, shall we? Hopefully you're up to this point in the t-shirt blanket making process. In my last video, which is making a t-shirt blanket, I went more in depth in the cutting and all that stuff. I did just a very brief snippet here at the beginning of this video. So if you need a little bit more instruction on that, go check out that other video. I've linked it in the description. But if not, we're going to pick up from where we left off. To make the t-shirt quilt, you're gonna need your t-shirt squares, an iron, a 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch quilting ruler, or a cardboard template, or a template that you make out of some sort of material. Lightweight, fusible interfacing. This is Pelon SF101. A rotary cutter and a flat sheet. I'm using a flat sheet because it's cheaper than buying the fabric to back this, honestly, because this is a flat sheet that I already have. If you don't want to use a sheet, you can pick out fabric to go on the back. If you want it to be super soft, I might suggest minky fabric, but if you're just looking to do quilting and just make it look pretty, uh, I would suggest quilting cotton or maybe flannel if you want to kind of go in between with the softness and the warmth. When you buy interfacing, it comes with instructions that tell you how to do it. But in general, there is a rough side and there is a smooth side. You're going to start with the rough side up. Now we're going to do this a little bit of the cheater way to make it easier. Instead of cutting the interfacing out, I'm actually going to use it as sort of a conveyor belt where I am going to iron my t-shirts on and then I'm going to cut them out later. It saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of the finicky stuff of trying to get it to line up exactly. So this will just be easier. Follow the instructions that come with your interfacing. I'm covering my t-shirt with a pressing cloth, which is just a flour sack kitchen towel. My interfacing says to use a damp press cloth. So I'm just gonna use, this is not actually Febreze, it's an empty Febreze bottle filled with water. I'm just gonna lightly spritz it and then press. And drink a little bit. You want to make sure that you check your bond before you move on. Mine is not quite set here in this corner, so I'm just going to spritz it again. Now you can see that my t-shirt is fused, and the reason that we do this is because if you look at it now, it's a lot stiffer and a lot. it's going to be a lot easier to work with to sew. So even if you do the t-shirt blanket version, you don't do the batting and all that stuff, it might be easier for you to sew the quilt squares together if you back it with interfacing. It just takes a lot more time and it's a little more expensive. Honestly, I feel like this is the most time consuming part of the project. Make sure that you keep your drink refilled and let's move on to the next square. Now that you have all of your squares backed with interfacing, we're gonna start by cutting them out. Now that they're cut out, we need to square them up. Take your quilting ruler and center your design inside of it. If you're not using a quilting ruler, then center your design in your template. I know this one isn't centered, but I want this signature, so this is where I'm at. Now we're gonna take our rotary cutter and we're going to cut away the excess. Now look at this gorgeous square. So put your square aside and repeat it with all the others. Just look at how satisfying this is. Ah, let's celebrate. Now it is time to lay out our blocks into our quilt pattern. first row and I'm going to show you how to pin the blocks together so that we can start sewing pairs and then after we sew the pairs together then we'll sew the whole, whole row together after that. 
So to start, we're calling this block one, two, three, and four. So you're gonna take block two, you're gonna place it upside down on top of block number one. Line up this edge and pin or clip along the right hand side. Now I like to take a little piece of paper or a sticky note and I put 1.1 on it. And I'm going to either stick it or for extra security, I'm going to clip it here. So this I know is in position 1.1. I'm gonna set this one aside. Now this is block three and block four. I'm gonna take block four and place it on top of block three, right sides together, and then we'll line it up. Once it's all nice and lined up, go ahead and clip it. Now I'm gonna label this block with 1.2 and then set it aside. Now this is row two, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to take the even numbered block and place it on top of the odd numbered block. So number two goes on number one, and number four goes on number three. This is part of why we back these squares with interfacing, because they're so much easier to put together and line up this way. Clip the edges, and then this is going to be 2.1, because it is the first section of row two. Let's pretend, though, that this is a fifth block, that I have pinned my two pairs together, but now I have an odd number. So what I would do was I would label this with 1.3 and then I would put it with the other blocks. That way I know what position it's in and which block I need to sew it onto later. Now we've got all of our pairs put together. We are going to stop and take a drink break. For sure. Cheers my friend. You are going to go to your sewing machine and you are going to sew each pair together with a quarter inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. I have to sew this where my label is. So what I'm gonna do is remove the label and I'm gonna re-clip it up here at the top so I still know where this block goes, but it doesn't get in the way of my sewing. Make sure that your pins or your clips are nearby and so is your wine. sewn our pairs together, we've cut our threads, now we're going to press our seams open. So go ahead and open up your pair and lay it face down. You're actually going to do this after each time that you sew pairs, blocks, and rows together. Anytime that you make a seam, you are going to press it flat and open. Right now, this is what our seam looks like from the front. We press it open by folding open the seam with our fingers and putting the iron on it. So it's flat and open like that. Now when you look at the front, look how nice and flat it looks. So do this for each set of blocks that you have. So now our seams are pressed open and we need to put our pairs together into our rows. So this is my 1.1, this is my 1.2. This is where we are going to put them together and sew them to make one big row. So you're gonna take 1.2 and just flip it on top of 1.1. We're gonna line up the right edge and then your middle seam here should also line up in theory. Once you've got the right edge lined up, you've got the middle seam lined up, make sure that you kind of smooth everything out, make sure that the rest of it is lined up then pin or clip this right edge. Then you're gonna repeat that for all of your other rows. Let's pretend that this t-shirt scrap is my odd numbered block. So if you had a 1.1, a 1.2, and then you had a single 1.3, to put that on, after you sew this middle seam together, you are going to put your single block on top of the very right block on 1.2, then you would 
pin this edge and sew it and press the seam open and then your whole row will be done. Now all of our rows are clipped. We are going to sew along these clipped edges with a quarter inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. After you've clipped your threads, it's time to press open your seams again. The next step is very important. Make sure that your drink is refreshed. Take care of yourself. Now that you've done that, take your row one and lay it face up. This is my second row. To attach it to my first row, we're gonna put them right sides together. But you wanna make sure when you put row two on top of row one, that row two is upside down. So you can see if you open it like this, it would be right side up. That's because when we sew here and unfold it, we wanna make sure that it's facing the right direction. So place row two on top of row one, and then I'm gonna line up this middle seam here, and hopefully the rest of your seams line up as well. If not, just make it work the best that you can. Now you're going to pin or clip this bottom edge. Usually I like to do about three clips per t-shirt block, but you do as many as you feel that you need. You're gonna do the same thing with row three and four, placing row four on top of row three. Sometimes while I'm putting the rows together, once I get a seam lined up, I like to clip it with two clips, one on each side, so that it won't go anywhere. And then I'll keep doing that as I line up the seams. Now remember, I have an odd number of rows. So I'm going to sew row three and four together. That's my bottom most pair. Then after I do that, I'm gonna press my seam open and then I'm going to add my fifth row on top of row four and sew it so that I have a group of three at the bottom. Once again, we're gonna sew it along the bottom clipped edges with a quarter inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. Pro tip, if you want to stop and take a drink of wine or you have to stop and go to the bathroom, go, you know, stop your kids from killing each other or something, make sure that you put your needle down in the fabric. I've learned that the hard way. By putting it down into the fabric, it prevents the fabric from moving anywhere and it holds your place so that if you, you know, accidentally bump it or, you know, a kid comes through like a tornado, then your project doesn't, those stitches don't get ruined. Are so close to being done you guys mm. <coughs> okay this is my bottom rows uh, three four and five and then this here is my top row one and two now I just need to put them together so we're gonna place row three four and five or your bottom rows and we're going to place them face up we're gonna take our top section and we are going to place it upside down just like we did with putting the rows together on top of our bottom section. So now when we unfold it, see everything will be facing the right direction. Okay, now we just want to line up our seams, our edges. Now this is the last one. Woo! We're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. And then we're going to clip our threads and press that last seam open. And then our top is done. Ah, look at that! You should be super proud because this is not a super easy project. Congratulations on finishing your top. For the next step, you're going to need your batting and the fabric that you're using as a back. So now I need to cut some strips off of my sheet so I can use them as a border. If you're not using a sheet, then you'll do the same thing but with your fabric. You are going to need four strips of fabric, three inches wide. You're going to cut two going the width and two going the length. So the two going the width are going to be for the top and bottom of my quilt and the two going the length are going to be the sides of my quilt. Now hopefully you'll be able to see this but the easiest way that I found to cut this is to use my rotary cutter and to fold the sheet so I can cut through multiple layers at once. So first I'm going to cut the strips width. So this is the top of my sheet you can see because it has this big finished edge. I'm gonna fold it in half this way. And 
then I'm going to fold it in half again. I've got all my wrinkles underneath smoothed out, but I don't actually want to use this finished part, so I'm going to slice it off with my rotary cutter. Now I'm just going to use my T-square to square up my edge. Then measure with a T-square, with a ruler, with a measuring tape, three inches. So you're going to cut a three inch strip and then you're going to cut a second three inch strip. Now we cut the three inch strips for our width but we are now going to cut them for the length, the ones that go up and down our t-shirt. So I'm gonna unfold my sheet, and this time I'm gonna take the top of the sheet and match it up with the bottom and fold it in half that way. So now this is the top where I was just cutting from, and this is the bottom, and they're put together. And then this is my folded edge here. So I should have two finished edges of the sheet together. And this is my length. So I'm actually gonna fold it in half again. So now here is the finished edge of the sheet here. This is the folded part, and this is the not folded part. I'm gonna slice off the finished edge because I don't really want it. Now I'm gonna cut two three inch strips going this way. So I've measured three inches. I'm just gonna slice off this strip. And then I'm gonna cut a second three inch strip. Now that I've got the top sewn and I have my borders cut, we are gonna to start to put it together. If the edges of your strip are a little fraying or they don't look straight or perfect, it's okay because we're actually gonna kinda of hide that when we stitch it onto the top and then onto the back. Let's take a drink before we start this part. So you're gonna take one of your longer strips and you're gonna place it right sides together with one of the long sides of your quilt. Hang the strip over the top at least three inches. Line up the edges and then pin or clip it in place. So you see how when I un after I stitch it and unfold it, it's going to look like that. If you have any extra on the end, go ahead and trim it off, but make sure that you leave three inches hanging off the edge of each side. So take this to your sewing machine. You're going to sew about a quarter inch from the top is where you're going to start. And you're going to sew all the way down using a half inch seam allowance. Now that's a little bit bigger than the seam allowance that we've been doing, so you can use a quarter inch if you would like. That's fine. So sew from one quarter inch from the top all the way down with a straight stitch and stop a quarter inch from the bottom. Make sure that your wine is close by. <laughs> ah, let's do this! Now you are going to take your border and you are going to fold it out and then take your iron and you're going to press the seams flat. Now that that's pressed flat, I'm going to take one of the shorter strips I have and I put it on the bottom. And again, this is going to overhang by several inches. Let's go ahead and line it up at the edge and then pin or clip it. And you can see how this is overlapping. Once again, we're going to start a quarter inch from the end. So that's about right here. I'm gonna sew down with a straight stitch in the same seam allowance I was just using. I'm gonna stop a quarter inch from the bottom. Then after I do that, I'm gonna have some wine. And then I'm going to sew the other long side and then the other short side. And then I will teach you what to do with the corners. Look how nice and quilty it's looking. This great border. Okay, now we are going to do the corners. Pick a corner to start with. Make sure that you have your wine. You have pins, you have a rotary cutter, and you have your iron nearby. Use your rotary cutter to slice off the excess. So that the corners look like this. Now turn it upside down because we wanna be doing this on the wrong side so that you can't see the seam. So right now my corner looks like this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the top and the bottom and I am going to put them together, match up the corners, and put them together like this so that they make a point. They make two little triangles. I'm gonna fold these two sides down and I'm gonna press it open. 
Mine looks a little weird, don't worry about it too much. Now take a pin, put your triangles back together, and then pin just above the crease that you just made. I'm actually gonna do two pins to make sure it stays together. Now you are going to take this to your sewing machine and folding this to one side, you are going to sew along that little crease that you made. So from this corner to the corner of your t-shirt blanket here. So let's go ahead and sew that. Then you're gonna trim off the extra fabric on the outside of your seam leaving about a quarter of an inch. We're gonna use our fingers to open it up and then use an iron to press it open. So now if you flip it over to the other side, you have this corner, woo! And then you can just press that flat with an iron. We are going to repeat the same steps for the other three quarters. Pro tip, before cutting off the excess and you know putting them all together and everything iron them flat so that the seam allowance that you use is continued and it's nice and pressed it'll make it easier to put them together and easier when you iron them after you sew them together so i'm just going to press that one fold it over i'm going to come down and press this one too so now after i have cut off the edges, when I place them together, these nice creased edges here sit together really nicely. And now here is our quilt with our border and our nice corners. Now we just have to put the back and the batting in. Excellent, we're so close. Wine break. All right, now you need to cut your batting. So the way I like to do it is I unroll my batting and I lay it out on my bedroom floor, my craft room floor, or something like that. Then I place my blanket on top and I use my fabric scissors to cut around the edge. You are going to do the same thing for the fabric that you're using for the back, whether it's the leftover sheet or it's another type of fabric like minky or fleece. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna lay it out, you're gonna cut it to the same size as your top. If you have any embellishments you would like to add, now is the time to do that before we start putting on the batting and the backing as well. So I went ahead and put on my Iron On Wild Roots patch, which looks super cute, I love it. I also did some little applique pieces from t-shirts that these didn't quite fit on my 12 by 12, but I wanted to keep them anyway, so I cut them out and then I did a nice little border with an overlock stitch um, in a contrasting thread color. So. If you have any of that kind of stuff, you wanna add applique, you wanna add patches and that sort of thing, do that now. And then we're going to put together our batting and our top. Woo! First lay out your batting, then lay your blanket on top and line up the edges. Make sure that your blanket is right side up, then place what you're going to be using as the back right side down. Okay, now that your back is cut to size, the back should be face down, the t-shirt should be face up, and then you have your batting on the very bottom. What we're going to do before we pin the edges is I'm going to take some safety pins. These are actually quilters basting pins, but you can just use safety pins or regular pins if you want. And we are going to pin through all of the layers of fabric. This way, it'll keep everything together while we're sewing so that it doesn't shift around on us. All right, now that we've pinned the quilt so that it won't move, we are now going to clip or pin the edges. I'm gonna mark my starting and stopping points with double clips so that I know where I'm starting and where I'm stopping. And I'm leaving about a 12 inch gap to be able to turn everything right side out, about the size of one t-shirt square. So go ahead and clip and pin around the whole thing. Okay, that was a lot of work, so let's take a break. Gotta refresh yourself before we start on this next part. This next part isn't necessarily hard, it just takes a lot of time and thread. 
So remember we put in our starting and stopping point. We are going to sew from start to stop with a half inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. Make sure you snip those threads. Make sure you take a drink. Before we can turn our beautiful creation right side out, we need to remove all of the safety pins or pins that you put in the middle here to keep all three of the layers together. Theoretically, they should all be together now because of where you sewed around the outside. Plus, we can't turn it right side out if these are in the middle. A couple of pro tips for sewing all of the layers together. Number one, Make sure that when you need to adjust your fabric and move it, because you know it starts to fall down or something, make sure your needle is down in the fabric. Otherwise, the fabric will move and the thread will go with it. Pro tip number two, try to have a really large area because the fabric does weigh a lot. And so it will kind of drag down and cause your seams to be crooked if you're not careful. Okay, I think that's all my pins. If not, I'll find out in a minute. <laughs> One more thing to do before we turn it right side out, and that is cut the corners. Make sure that you cut the corners straight across and don't get too close to the actual seam. <laughs> this is so exciting. Stick your hand in between the back layer and the t-shirt layer and turn it right side out. Okay, you can see how my corners kind of look like this. So I'm going to put my hand back in the opening and just gonna use my finger to push the corner out. Make it look a little nicer. You can use uh, the eraser end of a pencil. You can use a closed pen to kind of help you with that, but I'm just gonna use my finger. Let's just take our iron and press these seams flat really quick. Um, if you if some of your seams are like mine, where uh, like this, the back is kind of rolled onto the top a little bit. Use your fingers to roll the fabric, and then the back will be on the back, and the top will be on the top. So then just go ahead and do that and then press your seams flat so that it looks really nice. Don't forget about this. Almost last step, this is the second to last one. We just need to close this opening here. So you have three options. Option one is to just take it to your sewing machine and straight stitch right across the opening. And if you stitch really close to the edge, it probably won't be very noticeable. So that's one option. Option two, is to take it to your sewing machine, fold it under, and then top stitch around the entire blanket using like a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you like the way that the top stitching looks and you wanna have a little top stitch on the border, then you can go that route. Option three, which is actually the one that I'm going to do, is to fold it under again, and then use a hand needle to hand stitch it closed with an invisible stitch. So I don't want to have a top stitch on mine just because I don't know, I just don't. So I'm going to hand stitch it close. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold it under, which I've just done. I'm going to press it, and then I'm going to get out my hand needle and I'm going to stitch it closed. All right, now our top is closed up, and there's only one step left, and that is quilting. We couldn't call it a t shirt quilt if we didn't actually do some quilting. Now, this can be as time consuming as you want it to be. The reason that we do quilting partly to make it look pretty, partly because it's a little therapeutic, but also to hold all three layers together, top, batting, and back. Quilting can be very difficult depending on how you do it. If you do freehand quilting, it can be extremely difficult if you don't know how to do it or if you don't have any practice with it. I, for one, am not great at it. <laughs> so maybe your best option is to take your quilt to someone and pay them to quilt it. If you go to your local quilting shop, there are probably people there, or they will know of people where you can basically give your blanket to them. They quilt it and they give it back. So there you go. That's your least time consuming option. However, also the most expensive. Another option is to just do a straight stitch from the top all the way down along the lines. You can do along every single line. You can go maybe every other. And by doing that, you make like this kind of grid on the back. 
Another option is that you can try freehand quilting. You'll probably need a special quilting foot for your machine. You'll also need to turn the feed dog off and you can probably find videos and things of how to do quilting. I've also recently seen on my Instagram ads templates that you can get for quilting. You put the template down and then you quilt kind of around the plastic and it makes these little nice designs. It can be really time consuming to do that since you have to do the entire quilt. Another option is maybe to sort of combine the two previous options where if you have a design like this 4-H here, I could just outline the 4-H with my stitches. Um, I could outline the text or if there's a circle, I could just go around the circle. So you're sort of doing freehand quilting, but sort of not. So this next part is really up to you. You wanna start where the border meets your t-shirts. So you don't wanna be quilting through the border. You wanna start here and you just wanna be quilting the t-shirt part. So let's do this. I think this part will definitely be helped if you have wine. <laughs> Maybe I should just drink wine instead of quilting it. So what I'm going to do with this quilt is I am going to go just along the seams, but my machine, I'm using a FAF Performance 2056, and it comes preloaded with hundreds of different stitches, like literally hundreds. So I've got butterfly stitches, and I think there's some dolphins, turtles, fun antique quilting stitches. I've got different overlock stitches, several different kinds of like utility stitches. So if you are doing the just straight down the rows, like I'm going to do, you don't have to stick to just a straight stitch if you don't want to. A quilt I made recently for my daughter, I did just lines because I'm not super comfortable with the freehand quilting yet. And I picked a stitch on my machine that were these fun loops. And so that is going down one direction of the quilt. And then I picked another stitch that went kind of like this and I did that the opposite direction. And when you go to the back, it has this kind of fun like grid pattern on it, which is really fun. So what I would do is I would put on an audiobook, put on your favorite TV show, grab a glass of wine, and just kind of have fun with it, which is exactly <coughs> what I'm gonna do. I decided I didn't want to do every single row, which you don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, if you wanna take the time and sit here and drink your wine and watch your show, absolutely, you totally should. Um, I'm going to do this, uh, this row right here and this row right here so that it's even. And then going the other way, I think I'm probably gonna do two or three rows. Um, so that it goes a little bit quicker, but I still manage to quilt all three of my layers together. Make sure that my fabric is not folded or anything weird. Start at the edge of the border. Make sure you backstitch, keep that seam in place. And then one hand on each side. After I finish that row, you can see that the fabric actually got tucked under a little bit on that one. So to help prevent that from happening, you can put those pins back in. Remember the safety pins where we pinned all the layers together before we sewed the outside? Um, I probably should have done that. I should have put my pins back in so that it kept all of the layers together because what happened here is that the fabric underneath just shifted up a little bit and then as I sewed I kind of pushed it so I ended up accidentally uh kind of ruining that a little bit but it's okay I'm not super worried about it I think it still looks fine so I'm just going to keep going uh but I am going to go ahead and um straighten my fabric out and pin it back together uh probably every other square or so and just make sure that the wrinkles are all pushed out and that you get through all three layers of fabric so that none of them go anywhere while you're finishing quilting. Ta-da! You should feel so proud of yourself. Look at this super great snuggly t-shirt quilt. So congratulations on finishing your t-shirt quilt. Woo! And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and then stick around so that you can drink along and sew along with me on my next video. Thanks for watching.